Hey guys, we're going to talk about item charges or something called landed cost. Um, in the industry, we talk more about landed cost in NAV or in Business Central, we talk about item charges. The reason is landed cost uh, just talks about cost that you put on top of the product as it comes in, like freight, duties, etc. However, item charges are symmetrical in Business Central, meaning that you can actually put it on any receipt, any shipment, whether it's inbound on the sales side, inbound outbound, or inbound outbound on the purchase side. So purchase return orders, purchase receipts, sales return orders, sales shipments. But anyways, uh, why does it work? And it's actually an extremely cool concept. The reason why it works is because in Business Central, you have something called item. And then underneath that, we have something called item ledger entries. And those are the transactions. So in this case, let's say if we have a coffee mug as the item, and then a transaction could be purchase for uh, quantity 10, and let's say for $100 amount. So the unit cost is $10. Uh, so that's a transaction, and that happens maybe 1st of January uh, 19. So um, and those we call item ledger entries because they're ledger entries for the item. <coughs> now, what Business Central has on top of that is it has something called value entries, which is a sub-ledger of the item ledger entries. And that's what enables landed cost. So what that means is that this amount right here, $100, is actually made up of a value entry that comes in here, which is called a direct cost for $100, which is direct cost to the vendor, whatever vendor that is. Now, <clears throat> when we go ahead and we want to book a purchase order to a freighter, so let's say there's a PO to a freight company, let's say it's uh, FedEx, for uh, let's say $50, and we want to apply this $50 to this purchase receipt, we can do that. So when we actually do that, and we post this purchase order, there's another value entry that happens to come in here called item charge. For $50, which means that this item ledger entry here changes to 150, which means that the unit cost here becomes $15. And this could have happened, the direct cost, of course, first, first, 19. And the PO here could have happened on the first 15, 19, so 15 days later. And that would have been here, one, 15, 19. So the, the cost of the item could have changed 15 days later, which means um, it got raised. So that's called landed cost. And that means even if the item was sold, so let's say it was sold on the 5th, here, a sale. Let's say all of it was sold, 10, <coughs> for let's say the price, I'll put that here price was 200 the cost was 100 because that's what the cost was when the sale happened but then when the item charge comes in 15 days later or this day 10 days later than the sale the cost gets updated to 150 and the system posts an extra cost of goods sold after the fact which is brilliant and that you can only do that if you have these three levels so we're going to show you that in the system let's take a look all right so in the system uh, what we're going to do is record a item charge or landed cost um, <clears throat> so basically we go into items and if i go into the coffee mug um, <clears throat> I have here the item card 
Uh, and I am going to navigate into the item, sorry, history, entries, ledger entries. So that is basically everything that's happened with this item. And we have a few purchases, as you can see. Um, so this one, actually, we only have one. Well, anyways, we have a purchase here for 20 and it's $50. And notice that I can click on $50 and that will give me the cost. So if I open that up, this is the direct cost to the vendor uh, for $50. So this is what we paid the vendor and the cost per unit is 2.5. Now, now we're going to pay freight on this. And, uh, and what I want to do is I want to increase the cost of this item right here, even though it's this item has gone through probably a lot. It's been negatively adjusted. It's been sold. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of transactions right here. Uh, in any case, I what I want to do is increase the cost. So how do I do that? I actually go into purchase invoices. Actually, I'm going to do a purchase order. I don't think it matters which one you do, but um, what we need to do is create a liability. So I click on new and pick a vendor and I am actually going to pick the Fabricam. That's fine. They actually shipped it to me as well. I sold it to me, interestingly enough. And over here in the type line, I can pick charge or item or item charge <laughs> and click on number here. And here you set this up uh, if you're setting up a system, but in the demo system, it gives us a few options here. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is purchase freight. Well, there's no location needed. Uh, unit of measure technically is not needed, but I am just gonna put it as pieces. Um, quantity is one because we're just paying one amount. And we paid uh, $300 for this. So now I've got a charge to the vendor uh, that I want to put on top of the cost of the item that I received. So I can go into more options line and click on something called item charge assignment. And over here, I can hit actions functions, get, um, let me see, it's not transfer, uh, sales return. Let me go ahead and just open this up a little bit. Here we go. Get receipt lines. Now it's funny that it goes here and says get receipt lines and then in action functions, I have the other options. Technically what this means is though, we can actually put this on any type of receipt or shipment. But I'm going to go ahead and get receipt lines. And now I get all the receipt lines that are here in the system. There's a lot. Uh, and I want to go ahead and search uh, for the coffee mug. And I have that here. I just hit OK. And now that brings that into uh, the screen here. I could have brought in a lot of receipts, a lot of different items. And it asks me about Okay, so how do you want to assign this? I'm going to go ahead and hit functions again. Oops. Over here. <laughs> Suggest item charge assignment. And it basically puts 300 to 1. Uh, it didn't even ask me. I think the reason why is because I had quantity 1. So there was really no way to distribute this any differently than to this line. <clears throat> I think if I actually had more lines, it would have brought up a list or a few options that I could have set up to distribute. Anyways, we close out. So we, we could distribute by volume, by weight, by quantity, you know, a few other things. Okay, so I go ahead and put in the invoice number here. Like that. And then I just hit process and post. And now the system posts through uh, and we receive an invoice. Technically, you only need to invoice, but 
we receive it as well, charge. And it's thinking and it's posting. So now that it's finishing up, what we want to do is go next into the item itself. Uh, not look at the posted invoice. Uh, just go into Kronos. Oops, I was in the item list, so I should just stay there. Go into items like that and into the coffee mug and here into navigate and history entries ledger entries there you go all right so now if i go into this purchase i can see that the cost is 350 dollars so i take that and click into it and i can see that we actually pay two and a half dollars for each cup um, and then fifteen dollars for freight so the freight was really expensive um, but it increased the cost of the item and now you can see the total cost is here up to 350 and you can see that it actually affected the next transaction after it it now is 350 as well so it's negatively adjusted and then we positively adjust it again so this is um, that's why it has to be tricky when you're uh, if you want the cost to go all the way through the chain if you negatively adjusted the item and then positively adjust it again like happened here the system does not know to take this cost here because in essence you might have um, lost it or it might have broken and then you might have positively adjusted something else somebody might have given it to you so that's why when you're positively adjusting uh, you have to put in the cost manually but if there would have been just a sale <clears throat> the cost of goods sold would have updated transfers transfers would have updated through etc so i hope you get the idea of uh, item charges very powerful uh, instrument uh, and feel free to use it in business central